And welcome to Liquid Lunch, a special edition. It's me, Hugh, and we've got uh, Delanova star Livingston of Uversa. I like to say the whole thing, Del. Uh, the author of this book here, The Revelatorium. And um, we are going to have a great conversation today because we're talking about uh, the second coming, UFOs, the heavenly host, and uh, so much more. And uh, we might even get into chemtrails and stuff like that. And uh, Delanova, great to have you here on the show. Well, thank you. All right. Now, where do we start with all this stuff? It's like, because I know, we were talking before the show. And, and we were talking, every, you said, you just asked me now, how many people are expecting the second coming? Right? How many billions? Well, Probably I would a say, few. Yeah, I would say a few billion. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're going to find out today that actually it's already happened. Is that yeah. right? That's exactly correct. Then now uh, that's... Uh, that may come as news to some people, but yep. Uh, yep. let's get into the details because you got some images here that we're going well, to talk about. But how do you want to start this conversation? Well, uh, I, I was going to go another way. I'll go this way. The, my plug into this kind of stuff started in uh, in in the very very early seventy seventy one. Yeah, I attended a lecture that was been given by somebody about UFOs. And he tended to seem to know what he was talking about. So I went again to another lecture he was given in January of, of uh, 1971. This was in uh, Vancouver. Uh, it was being given in his apartment, which was on the second floor of a two-story apartment building along Kingsway Street in Burnaby area of Vancouver. There was a coffee break, and three of us ended out on the back porch off the kitchen. One was an uh, uh, 18-year-old girl from Colombia. The second was a six-foot-nine Sasquatch. I love this part Sasquatch of the story. Sasquatch is incarnate. I love His that. His brother was six-foot-ten. They looked like the Scrag brothers. Beautiful people, but they looked like the Scrag brothers out of Little Abner. I hope they weren't freepers. No, no, they were. They were freepers. I have no idea what you mean by that. <laughs> All right, people next. can Google it. Next, next. <laughs> um, anyway, we're st- the three of us are standing on the back porch. It's overcast. And the girl was in the middle of a set saying, every time I've seen a UFO in Columbia, yeah. I felt something over my head. And she had her hand over her head like this. Mm-hmm. At that instant, I was picking up on, uh, in those days, saber jets used to go across. Um, and they had swept back wings. And you could hear the jet trail. You know, so far behind the plane, anybody from that era will remember any jet plane went by, you heard the the sound behind the plane. Right. That was automatic. There was the plane, there was the sound. So all of a sudden, it was just like um, a spotlight was going across the uh, overcast clouds. Here's the Sabre jet going by. So I went to the sound, there's no sound. I went back to the Sabre jet, I went back to the no sound. At that very instant, the girl had just been saying the sentence. The door opened. The guy giving the lecture steps out with a big grin and said, Did you see it? Did you see the flying saucer? And then he went back into the kitchen. And I said, Right. See? So that was my first time. So you did see it. Yeah, I did see it. They all saw it. The Sasquatches yeah. saw it, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, the second time is, this was in the, well, probably June of, uh, of that spring. Um, I was living in a place downtown in Vancouver uh, where the where the uh, canyons are, you know, the high-rise towers. Mm-hmm. And, and anyway, all you could see is a strip of blue sky up right. between them. Yeah. And I was up on the second floor of the house, and the guy came running in, and he said, there's a, there's a flying saucer out there. Hurry, 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 you know. So he came tumbling down their throat, and sure enough, there's a silver, just like a, a smarty sitting up there, absolutely pure silver sitting right there. Then went, Phew, just like that, gone. So that was my second one. Yeah. The third one, uh, now we're talking about the guy giving the lecture again. Now we're down in Denver in the summer of 73. Uh, Some of us had come down from Vancouver for some lectures. He was now down in Denver. And we were uh, on the way back to Vancouver, so uh, he held a barbecue in his backyard as a send-off. There was about maybe 20 of us there. Mm -hmm. Not all of us going back to Vancouver, but anyway, there was about 20 of us there. So right overhead, the whole time, there was a sizzling white sausage-shaped cloud maybe a 1,000 feet up, just sitting there, see? Everybody knew what it was. Nobody said anything. Everybody knew what it was, you know, unspoken, see? So after about two hours, everybody said goodbye. We headed up. There There was three cars. We headed up the freeway going north. They drove up behind us as a send off, you know, he and his wife. And the white cloud was right over top of their car. Mm-hmm. 
we came out about 40 miles. They tooted and horned, turned the car around and went back. And the cloud went straight back with them. So that was the third time I've seen it. Now, what I'm going to be showing you today later is almost exactly what we saw then, only it's in mirror image because you're seeing the hole in the cloud with the ionizations rather than the white cloud. So these but, things don't look like, or do they? Like, do they look well, like a flying saucer? No, 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 no. The, 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 here's the whole point that we're going to get at here. The heavenly host, first, first of all, Christ, Christ is back. That's that. He's, he's been back since the middle of May. By the way, it was said in 1971 that, that, that Christ would be back uh, 2013 to 2015. He'd be back in, permanently in the fourth dimension getting things ready. And he's been back since May 14th, approximately, of 2014. So that was pretty good. That's like two years now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's people that have talked to him. So, yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't show up unless you're going to get some information or instructed, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, long and short, long and short. So the first image that's up, uh, I'm, I'm now living in, in Ottawa. I'd lived there for 30 years, but in the early 90s, uh, I had been seeing... I, w I was sh how do I put it this way? I was shown these kind of formations in uh, early '71, the summer, without knowing what they were. Uh, we were at the beach. Uh, the guy said, "If you're really sharp, you're going to see some UFOs." And where was this? Vancouver. This is Vancouver at English Bay for the afternoon. It was a hot, sunny, nice day. Yeah. All the way up to Georgia Strait, these rain lines were all over the place. I sp I saw those lines. I just never said anything and never connected that that's what was in behind and he never said anything because nobody was sharp enough to pick up on it see right. but in the early 90s all of a sudden there's the message those are radionic ships of light which are they're called radionic because they're magnetic but they don't have a north and south pole can we look at a picture now yeah, you can show uh, us what uh, this looks like one. here because this, uh, this was the very first one I took this was in Vancouver in 1974 and uh, as you can see, the lines are, everybody looks at that and says, them's chemtrails. And I answer, uh, like um, John Panette, the you know, comedian, I say, nay, nay. <laughs> if you bring up number two, you'll see the difference. So those aren't chemtrails. No, they're not chemtrails. Those are not chemtrails. No, I say, nay, nay. What, you go, go to the next n number two. Bring up number two. There. Those are chemtrails. Those are chemtrails. Now, the, the, the key to this is yeah. that... First of all, those are not feathery like uh, peacock tail feathers. Yeah. All right, we'll go back to the other one in a minute. And they meet at the horizon. Those lines will all meet at the horizon by parallax. That's the way. Not chemtrails, the other one. You know, the chemtrails will meet at the horizon by parallax. They're starting from the point of the horizon and they're ending at the point of the horizon. You know what parallax is? You know, a pair of uh, uh, train tracks will meet at the horizon together. At, like a point. At, yeah, at a point. Well, yeah. those will meet at the horizon at the Chemtrails will. Chemtrails will, yeah. yeah. Now, if you go back to number one again, there's two things that are, that are distinctively different than chemtrails. Those are feathery ionizations, like peacock feathers. Yeah. And the point of intersection is about 10 to 15 degrees off the horizon. I see. That's the key. Now, what you're looking at is a fifth. There's the, the radionic fleet, the heavenly host that's, uh, that's accompanying the return of Christ is uh, outside, there's millions of them. They're outside, the, fl uh, the fleet's outside the orbit of Pluto. The four big motherships of the fleet are called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which is what that's all about. But these things will teleport in on a daily basis all over the planet. Uh, and when they come in, they teleport into Earth's fifth dimension, and they set up a, a radionic field. Yeah. All right, and and if there is a cloud vapor present, mm -hmm. as they move through, the magnetic lines will reflect into the ionizations, and you get that feathery effect. Like they can be up there for days on end, and you don't see anything because there's no ionized ionized water vapor going through. I see. It's only it's the same thing as you got a, a bar magnet and you throw you know filings over a glass, put it over top. Well, the filings will take on the shape of the magnetic field. Yeah. But if there's no filings, you don't see anything, even though the field's still there. Well, this is the same thing. If there's no ionized water vapor passing through, you don't see anything. It's only when that so so they reflect uh, a couple hours later. They might they be gone the next day. They can sit up there days on end sometimes. Mm -hmm. the same place. They won't move. Uh, and then you'll see them again. Then you won't. Then you will. And you won't. There was one in Paris 
that sat out there for almost two months. Paris, Ontario? Paris, Ontario, which is about 15 kilometers uh, east of Brantford, Ontario, um, or west of Brantford, Ontario. Um, you didn't see him all the time. You see him today, two days later, you see him again, a week later, you see him again. Anyway, it was two months. Same two places, the negative and the positive. That's all you got to get into. Um, the Ken, the contrails, people, can you show three? Contrails or chemtrails? Well, no, that's a contrail. Right. And people that are shown chemtrails uh, will say, oh, them's contrails. And then you say, I say, nay, nay. The yeah. difference between a chemtrail is that the chemtrail will often fade out at the back. You'll see them fade out just behind. I thought that was a contrail. No, the contrails are the ones that don't fade out and expand slowly over time. I thought those were the chemtrails. What am I talking about? S- chemtrails s- stay put and get wider and wider and wider over That's time. That's what as, I thought. All right. Now, contrails will fade out behind the, the plane Yeah, they sometime. fade out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're also quite a bit thinner. Yeah. So that's the difference between chemtrails and contrails. Yeah. They are both completely different than radionic trails right. yeah. because they're wide and feathery. And they meet uh, 10, 15 degrees above the horizon. And what you're saying is that these, um, uh, whatever you're calling them. There's, there's, there's 25 more of these images to come up, so yeah. we're not basing this whole argument on just this uh, just one. These are, we're going to see some more. But you're saying these are ships. The ones that aren't chemtrails, they're not contrails, are actually... Yeah, y- there's, there's a magnetic radionic ship of light, fifth dimension, sitting there with a magnetic field. And the way they work is that uh, one will represent, set up a magnetic, a positive magnetic pole. Yeah. There will be another 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. If you turn your head and look the other way, you'll see the opposite, which is a negative pole. Mm-hmm. And the mothership, which they're called local motherships. They're not like the vast f- ships of the fleet. They're this big, you know. Yeah. They're sitting overhead, suspended in the... But they don't it look like it, flying saucers, no, right? Some, no, no, no. Probably most no, people they, aren't going to well, recognize Well, here's the thing. If, if one of these um, uh, scout ships, uh, if you're ready to see them, they will let you see them by dropping their frequency. T- but you can have five people standing beside you, and they won't see it. Yeah. You'll see it. You'll be shown it, and it'll only be very brief. Because they're in a, from a different dimension. Well, they're from a different dimension, and the reason you're shown is because you have now accepted the reality of them enough that they're showing it to confirm your belief. That's enough, because now you're on the right path in the right direction. That's yeah. basically it. So the one that I saw in the canyon that the guy came running up, my brother, <laughs> who has never seen one, even though he's been a believer longer than I have, for whatever, he came running down. He was a tenth of a second too late, because when he popped out the door, the thing had already gone. So I was the one to have seen it. You know. So now, if you look at um, uh, image four, now, that was taken in Paris uh, last summer. That's a positive um, pole because the centers of the positive ones are, are, are filled with ionizations and the apex point is, is, is full. Now, if you take up the next one, that was, I just turned around with, with the cell phone. I just turned around and took that one. That's in exactly the same place, but 180 degrees in the opposite direction. You'll notice that it's empty. There's the, at, the, at the apex where there was the ball, cotton ball in the first, it's empty, and it's basically, it's an inside-out version of the two. That's, no, I arbitrarily call them the positive-negative pole. Who knows what way it is? I call it positive when they're full and negative when they're empty. It's like the Earth itself, where you have Antarctica, which is a body of land at the South Pole, and you've got the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> which is empty. Which is empty, <laughs> and they're exactly the same size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a point I hadn't seen, but you're correct, 100%. I, yeah. It's a good analogy, exactly the same way. So now we're looking at, uh, let me just get my blueprint going here. Uh, by the way, I'm drinking the, the pink drink. That oh, you yeah, 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 the zeal. Yeah, this uh, stuff is fantastic. T- I'm tell- feeling better already. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. zeal. <laughs> Available here at that channel and or from Delanova. You, so. tell, t- on, in another two weeks, you can go on the Internet. Write this down, zeal.vip. I've got Write a it down, going people, up. zeal.vip, and have some of this stuff. And wait, and wait until after the middle of the month because it's not the, the domain. This stuff is so good. It's yeah, making right. me feel like a... All right, so back to the UFOs. <laughs> We're go- going to look at figure six. Okay, there we go. 
Now, this is a, this was done just uh, two weeks ago in Brantford. Uh, again, it's the positive poll because you're filled in the middle. If you bring up the next one, you can see again it's the negative poll because it's empty in the middle. And Those you took this at the same moment, but this is uh, well, 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Now, in here's the, other the here's a point too. You very seldom see the two together. You know, like the 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 one in Paris after years, as it were, that was the first time I ever got the two together, one after the other, at the same time. Usually one's faded out. What happens, you'll see the ionization movement, you'll see the positive pole jump up, it'll start fading out, then the negative pole will jump up, but now the positive one's gone, you know, because mm-hmm. these ionization areas are not usually that large. But here we are with this one. Uh, these two sat up there, all, whoop, uh, back one. Uh, these two sat up there pretty well for the whole day. All right. Now the next one uh, shows the uh, the fact that there's a positive pole and a negative pole, and they're connected over top. Because instead of standing underneath like these photos that I've been showing you, where you take the you know the poles left and you know front and back because you're underneath them, this was t- this came off Google from the side. You can clearly see how they intermix. Right. You know the 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 positive pole on the right-hand side, the negative pole on the left-hand side. I mean, that's a perfect photograph. Where is that? Antarctica? Well, who knows? <laughs> it's in the middle of winter anyway, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> now, the website has uh, quite a few more images than the ones I'm showing here. I'm just going through a scoot. You yeah, know? but we still have a... a no, what do you want to do? Do you want to just keep going through the photos? I mean, i got a few questions about this. Well, stuff. yeah, we'll go through the photos if you want to ask. A couple. Let's go to the next one. Next little quick okay. series, then you get a lot more questions. Sure. <laughs> so, so, all right. Uh, oh, I got these out of sequence. So, figure, figure number ten. Number ten. Oh, I got mine wrong. So, figure number nine. Oh, nine and ten are the same. Oh, there, that's one. Yeah, right. The very next day, again in Brantford, where that last um, negative pole I showed you, um, the yeah. very next day in the morning, it was absolutely crystal clear. There was no sign of anything. Yeah. The um, jet stream started moving in slowly from the southwest, and around about 2.30, 3 o'clock, all of a sudden you're looking at figure 10. This was taken just up King George Road at the Tim Hortons on uh, in Brantford. Uh, and that's a pretty wild and woolly picture. The next day, some people in Brantford said, holy mackerel, did you see the clouds yesterday? I mean, it was pretty dramatic. Now, the story was that there was two people coming in from Toronto meeting with three of us from Brantford at the Tim Hortons that where this picture was taken from. And when they arrived, they were all excited because they, they, they thought they saw a mothership coming in that big white cloud to them looked like a big mothership coming in, see? So the one of the fellows from Peter, he's been interviewed on your show, uh, had said that the day before he had been, uh, you know, had a, a, a dream experience the night before where he was told that he's going to be able to start uncloaking UFOs. Right. Which is a pretty dramatic statement to make, you know? Yeah. So now he's sitting in Tim Hortons with us, and I look out and I see a funny little just... So I went out and photographed it. If you can now put up the next photograph. Nope, one back. You have to go two back. I'm sorry, I got them out of sequence. I have to apologize. There. You can see the circle. Right in the middle. And there's four more just sticking on the edge of the cloud. Oh, yeah. There's a little cluster of them. Now, this, the thing, when these when these... Uh, scout ships come into the fifth dimension when they move around uh, the negative ones will be um, smoke rings just like you're looking at the positive ones will be like a um, like a tennis ball which I'm going to show you in a minute but anyway that if you if you want to go back again now to the previous figure you know with the big uh, bold clouds there uh, back, no up one uh, up one again up one again that point again. Ah, sorry, keep going. No, you're going the wrong direction. Uh, there, that one. If you if you look at the top of the flagpole yeah. or the light standard, yeah, yeah, and you come straight across to where the opening meets the edge of the cloud, mm-hmm. 
you can't see it on this, but that's where those, they were just tucked right into that, uh, you know, at the edge of the cloud there. Now, was he uh, able to decloak that well, day? Well, I've, in all these years, all these years, I have never seen smoke, little tiny smoke rings before, ever. And so here I am looking at them. He decloaked them. Yeah, they he were decloaked. Know, he, they were decloaked. I don't think he would, he obviously hadn't done it consciously, but he said, "I I was shown last night." He didn't know about this. I didn't show him this until the week later. This, this photograph, he had to blow it up to find them. You know, yeah. and I didn't blow them up because he had said it. I blow it, blew them up because I said, "There's something funny going on there." What was this? And I found them. And he had said a week later. He said, "I was told the day before he had come from Peterborough to Brantford to meet." that he's uh, able to now to start decloaking UFOs. And I thought, that's got to be pretty amazing, you mm -hmm. know. So anyway, now we're looking at uh, uh, figure number 11. Do, there. Do, do. Uh, the positive poles, when they're moving around, see, when they stop is when they have time. It takes uh, an hour or two for the magnetic fields to start radiating outward, the radionic effect. But when they're moving around you see them as, um, as little tennis balls. Now, those look like UFOs. Yeah, well, everybody, I've, <laughs> I've seen, those I've seen myself quietly moving from one cloud to another, just discreetly floating yeah. through, see? Now, uh, if you go to the next image, uh, this came off Google, you'll see over in the right-hand side in the middle um, some cotton balls. Now, those are positive, so on. Uh, th and I went looking because now I'm looking. If you go to the next one, which is where th this came from, uh, that's a positive. It's exactly the same as the one we saw in Brantford, only it's on the positive side. And this came out of Google. And that's a very, very large thing. So I figure whoever took the photograph did some cutting and pasting over where those balls are. I don't think he knew what he was trying to make sense out of what he was looking at. Right. Be so I just want to uh, say, because we're talking about the second coming, uh, you've mentioned already that uh, Christ Michael ar arrived back in 2014 and that this um, correlates with what it says in Revelation, well, in Revelation, the Bible. Well, Re Re Revelation, right? Revelation says it as clearly as you want to get it. It says in chapter 1, verse 7, when he returns, he cometh with clouds. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I mentioned this to you earlier, the uh, Cosmic Circle of Fellowship wrote a, uh, a small piece called The New Revelations that they published in 1954, uh, and it said the same thing, only it said, when he cometh, uh, uh, he will, there will be phenomenon in the sky. Well, this is the phenomenon. This used to be called glory in the old days. The old biblical days, there was glory in the sky. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if see, what, what you see here is this little picture is, is, is fine, but if you're standing there and you're looking at one of these, these things are just like jaw-dropping because they go way out in these big feathery things, way overhead, way off to each side. Yeah. You know, and they're huge. They're, and I can't, I've tried a hundred different ways to, with a cell phone to, the cell phone camera is so small that when you move just in a slight bit, they go out of alignment. So I can get the top part to align, but the bottom part doesn't and so on. So these are the these are the real UFOs or the real, the real aliens UFOs. or these the real are. beings from other dimensions and cuz you say in yeah. your in Well your they're from all over creation. The heavenly host is, is a voluntary um, operation from all over creation and they're not just here because uh, whoopie do you know earth is now ready to uh, uh, join the community. Well that's basically true too. But the thing to remember is planet earth is it's not like a dry, you know, evolution that starts in the oceans and now it's reached a point where it's it's reached an intelligence level that it can join higher advanced. There's, there's nobody on Earth that isn't from somewhere else to start with. Right. All right. Uh, the root race of, of Earth at the time uh, was the Adamic. The Asian root race across the board is uh, is what's called the Adamic root race. There are 12 root races. And uh, 250 million years ago is when the fifth dimensional root race program started. Uh, the Adamics were the last of the, you know, the twelfth root race, root race. And um, while the revolution is going on on the planet, the the main body of them are in the sun, and they come over in contingents of ten thousand each, ten thousand, ten billion each. From the sun. From the sun, yeah, and and they st and they remain within, you know, Earth's um, fifth dimension. Uh, isn't it undergoing their evolution? But three and a half million years ago, 
the Adamic, by misadventure through Luciferian inter intervention, fell into the third dimension, which is where they've been ever since. Right. So uh, the fifth dimension is the bottom line of creation, so an evolution in the third dimension at all is very, very, very uh, anomalous. And only because the Luciferian um, uh, rebellion effect, which started five billion years ago and has now been ended mm -hmm. and is now being cleaned up, that's what Armageddon is all about. That's what a good part of all this is going on is all about. Mm -hmm. That whole uh, <laughs> corruption from creation is being cleaned away. Now, again, it's only a, a thousand galaxies that were ever affected, in, and the outer creation right now is 900 trillion light years across. Right. So it wasn't, it's irritating enough, but it wasn't a very big part, okay? Like people that say God and Lucifer were brothers and they're having a big fight and who's going to win don't really get the picture because we're talking about 900 trillion light years yeah. and how many countless trillions of galaxies are in that versus a thousand galaxies, this local universe, which is the only area in all of that that ever got any effect from this rebellion, all right? Now... Jesus, 2,000 years ago, set in motion all of the stuff that's coming up now. Uh, Jesus was, a, was an incarnation of uh, a Christ bestowal event by Christ Michael of Salving, of, not Salving, of Nebadon, who was, is, is the creator son daughter of this local universe of a thousand galaxies. It's, they build it. They're the, so that's the whole idea of the son of God, blah, 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 creator son daughter, da, 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 da. Uh, and when I say that Christ Michael of Salvington has returned, because Jesus was the incarnation 2,000 years ago, so it's yeah. not Jesus that has returned like all the Christian people think right. is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's Christ Michael who was Jesus 2,000 years ago, only in his whole form this time, not just, you know, an incarnated. So what's Salvington? At Salvington, that was my mistake. Salvington is the, is the headquarters of this galaxy. Nebadon is in this galaxy, but it's the headquarters of the whole local universe. So that was that was an error I made. Well, I'm glad we cleared that one. <laughs> so now we're gonna, if you want, we're gonna go through some because these things are these things are showing all over the planet all the time. Are we gonna see some more now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's, yeah. Right. let's let's see that. So if you week. bring up number fourteen, there. Now that was on my way to an interview here with you last fall. And I stopped, grabbed the coffee. It looks, stepped. yeah. Well, the, the only reason I brought this one in to point out is you can see how there's nothing on the right-hand side at the bottom. That's because the dry air is moving in and, and, uh, and evaporating the ionized vapor. So uh, 20 minutes from now, that'll, or 30 minutes from now, that'll all be gone. If I'd seen this 10, 20 minutes earlier, the bottom would all have been filled in with, with ionizations, too. That's why I say they come. Sometimes they, they they can come and go inside of twenty minutes. Sometimes they'll stay up there for hours. It depends on how much ionization. But they're not going to land, right? No, no, they're not landing. They're up in the fifth dimension. Yeah, that's why they. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But what are they yeah. doing here? Oh, that's probably uh, the most important question you've asked. I've yes. been dying to ask that question, well, but I didn't want to interrupt the, the, well, the pictures. Well, th th there's, there's a number of different things going on, but one of, the, one of the main things, the reason why it's such a large fleet, the Armageddon is cleaning out the lower astral health states. Uh, the fourth dimension has seven octaves, and the lower two octaves are called the lower astral health states. Yeah. This is where all of the negative conditions of the planet have, 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 have mired over the millions of years into a, a, a black content. Ever since, ever since the Adamic race went into the third dimension, shit's been happening, is the best way to put it. So that's all now collectively into the lower uh, two octaves. They're called the lower astral health states. And they're filled with, uh, with uh, well, were, with a black morass that's called Stygian Deep uh, of, of negative um, uh, N plus static, it's called. Is that like... N plus static? Is that related to the black goo? Well, that's, yeah, that's what black goo is. It's, it's native and plus static. I was telling uh, a friend on the way here that uh, you, you'll, it, once your consciousness reaches a certain point, you might see at night, you'll see a big black gob of, like, tar starting to come out of your mouth, and you'll start to try and pull it out and so on, and you'll eventually get it, except a tiny hair tether. You can't bite it, break it off, whatever. But that's negative and plus static that your higher consciousness has put together to expel from your auric field. And yeah. you can do that also. They'll bring some in from around you to expel, too. But that's called frogs will leap out of the throat of the beast. That's what that meant, this black gobs of tar. Yeah. 
So mm. these gobs you're talking about. No, I thought there were two kinds of black goo. There was like native earth black goo, and then there was like alien black goo. Well, it's roughly the same, just probably different frequencies, but they're basically still the same thing. The, the negative N plus static is the after effects of, of, of consciousness not working properly with creative uh, laws because the Luciferians took everything in reverse. You know, the Luciferians, what the Luciferians tried to do was to set up a universe of their own making that was freed from the um, uh, obligation to serve the creators for creation. Mm hmm you know, the proper Christ action, and, 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 and they did it by reversing the, um, the, the way that the energy lines usually work. Now, in terms of man's consciousness, when your consciousness isn't working in harmony, so on, then you have what's generated in your fourth dimension is called a uh, N plus static. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, you know, the, the lower astral health states are filled with that. So while that's being cleaned out, the radionic ships are holding uh, an emerald green love field around the planet so it doesn't explode. See, Meldek explode because of the N-plus static. Mm -hmm. Atlanta didn't explode, but it blew up in its two major cities where the highest concentrations of that N-plus static were. These are the fires from heaven because, you know. And, and so to prevent something like that happening again, the radionic ships are holding a uh, a love field around the planet. So that's what they're doing here. Well, that's one of the things they're doing here. All right. Okay. Secondly, the reason they're teleporting in all the time and so on, is they they don't have fifth, third dimensional eyes and ears. So to them, the surface of the planet is just a black, you know, black hole. You know, they have no idea what's going on down here visually because they don't have the sensory. They're fifth dimensional. Mm -hmm. But people that are like you, everybody here, everybody here. Everybody in your whole loop. Uh, the consciousness has expanded enough that what you see with your eyes and ears is almost like a, tele, you know, a television camera in the third dimension moves up into your higher soul atom, mm -hmm. which is in your pituitary, and it pipes it upstairs to the UFOs who have moved in close enough to, because you can't, the third dimension consciousness can't move that stuff very far. So you're moving, you're moving what the eyes and your eyes and ears see move in to here and it gets moved up to the UFOs, now they can pipe it all the way across the galaxy. They can pipe it 10 galaxies if they have to because there's no time and space up there. So, yeah. But once it gets up here, so that's how, they, that's how they see what's going on down on the third dimension through the eyes and ears of everybody. So they're kind really of reading our sensory experience yeah, 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 and yeah, interpreting yeah, yeah. it and yeah, 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 rebroadcast yeah. That's or whatever. the second thing that's going on. Okay. All right? yeah. The third thing is going on is that this whole... Uh, Armageddon and 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 uh, the projects that are going on, which the revelatory talking about, are all taking place through um, uh, inter interdimensional communication between those who are the workers. You know, people call themselves light workers. They're very good, um, but the instructions will come down into their pituitary. We want you to do this. Now, this is intuition mostly. You don't say, "I want you to go to." Tim Hortons across the street, but you'll suddenly out of the clear blue sky have a big urge to go over to Tim Hortons, and you'll meet somebody over there you've never met before, but you have a really good conversation for five minutes. So, well, information has passed between the two because you did what you were asked to carry that piece of information across. It was brought down to you. Carry. This is going on all the time with everybody. That's how the job is getting done behind the scenes by people following their intuition. You know, it and, sounds... Huh? It sounds that's like... The, that's the third thing they're doing. All right? It sounds like there's a lot going on. Well, there is. To do I, with behind the, it, psh, 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 I mean, everybody says, oh, yeah, show me. Uh, yeah, well, you know... Now, is it only Those Tim that have an eye, let them see. I mean, golly me, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, so, we're going to look at some more, but... Um, uh, um, so, but maybe we can bring some up and you can talk about it, but... Um, so okay, so they have a purpose here, and their purpose coincides with uh, the second coming, which happened as you well, say. Well, the second coming is is, is it's the, the second coming isn't the big event. Uh, the second coming is the name for the, the, the next stage of the rebellion cleanup, which is Armageddon. The initial stages of the new creation, which is getting set up now. In the reason why Earth is at the centerfold at a hundred was at nine hundred trillion light years of universe. Why is Earth? 
it's because there's a new, it's the book goes into detail about, and I have talked about it a bit in some of your other shows. There's a new creation underway in Andromeda, a new super universe is starting up, and Earth is in the bifurcation. These one universe starts, a super universe breaks off from a previous by bifurcation, like the same way cells break off, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's four, then there's eight, and next, you know, you got a new, you know, you got an embryo. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing for universes. So we're at the very, very start of the first, like the first cell break, uh, bifurcation into Andromeda, which is where the new one is starting. So that's 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 a huge event because we've got 900 trillion light years of evolution of a super universe created or creation outer creation built of seven great super universes. They've all built built on the male side. Intelligence, energy, substance are the attribution, which you can see around you, and consciousness is the expressed result, which again, as you can see, because inside you, your intelligence, you have a consciousness. Now, take that all the way up the ladder, okay? The new creation is, the, is, is now going to be, there's going to be seven super universes that are going to be built on the female side which is an antimatter side. This is not the antimatter that the scientists talk about. Antimatter is, consciousness is actually an antimatter state. Of a, that's a very complicated thing. We won't get into that. But in the new creation, consciousness is the attribution, mm-hmm. and intelligence, energy, and substance is going to be the expressed result. So it's the exact opposite. So at any rate, at any rate, this local universe is the jump point, the... Uh, local solar sector headquarters, which is Orion, which is where the, the, our solar system belongs to, is the gateway. You know, it's the, you know, it's the loading dock, as you want to call it, or the launch pad, whatever. And Earth was the, originally the training sphere, where the first uh, seed souls would migrate into the new creation once they've been evolved with the proper experience. Right? That all got short circuited because Lucifer was the was the administered, uh, administrative um, head of the Orion s- local sector, and, and he went south. And he took this whole plan with him. I mean, not, not irrevocably, but he put a, a lot of pressure onto right, the plan. Right, and that's all been reversed now. What's we're he doing the, nowadays? We're, we're, yeah, and we're, that's the whole point. What's now, Lucifer doing today? Lucifer, for the last three million years, has been in solitary confinement on a planet called Zab. Zab? Yeah. Now, there is an interesting thing there. The prodigal son returns, you know. Uh, basically, in your consciousness, you have an x-axis, uh, sorry, x-axis and a y-axis, and one is related to your outer consciousness and the other to your inner. Now, if you start going, um, you know, start going a little bit nuts, you know, I, I hate to use that word, but anyway, if you start going off, off kilter, your axis will start to fall, mm-hmm. and you become corrupted. Right, and if they get down together where they're lined together, then you're fallen. Now the fallen ones are all. There's a number of them here. They're not the only ones, but there are a number of them here in our lower astral hall states called demons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the state they're in. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can start going this way again, then you can be redeemed. Right. Now Lucifer has actually started this. He started. This is recently. Yeah, he's starting to come out of his stupor. No, he's a long way to go. No, what happened? So he's on, imprisoned on Zab, but yeah. and he's coming out of it. He's, he's starting to come out of it, yeah. So he's eventually over a long, long, long period of time. See, he's, he's had some, some of his ovarian atoms. Like you have, your main soul atom has 199, they're called ovarian atoms. We're ovarian atoms, all of us here. We're projections from a greater soul source. But we're all ovarian men. We're the workers in the field, as it were. So he's had a ovarian atom uh, who's one of the disciples, John, the brother of Jesus. He was incarnated, he's passed now, but he was incarnated uh, um, at this present time. Um, he was, he was, he was, how do I put it? He did the right things in the third dimension, he did all the wrong things in the fourth dimension. So wait, is that John who well, wrote the, the, the incarnation? Revelation? No, 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 that's John the Divine. Okay. That's a different John. All right. Uh, John, the brother of Jesus. Okay. Uh, was, was a it, sort of... Um, it's, how do I put it, uh, as a first step of having somebody on his side when he's ready to start right. moving back out into this thing. The same thing with Satan. Satan is a woman. Satan was, uh, was under Lucifer's command, but, but Lu- Lu- she was a, a, an ambassador. Like, Lucifer was, was an was a administrator, but 
under him there were ambassadors that that went out to the different planets with instructions to, it's the same way as ambassadors work you know in governments and so on right. she was an ambassador a young young one and uh, she she embraced the Luciferian um, um, manifesto and so on took it to the planets that's why everybody knows that it talks about Satan but in 1994 yeah. she brought she returned to the feet of Christ and brought all her people with her that was a big huge 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 step now, I'm not the only one saying that. I saw this on the Internet probably uh, two months ago on somebody's article. It says, uh, fear not, I don't know how they word it, but uh, Satan has returned to the feet of Christ. Yeah. Now, did they read my revelatorium information? Or, you know, anyway, I was, <laughs> yeah, right, what do you know? You know, it's starting to get out. So, okay, so. So the people that are like the Illuminati and the, all these guys that are doing sacrifices to Satan and so on. Yeah. I mean, You've heard the expression, peeing out the window? <laughs> yeah. Well, they should take a second look at what they're doing, you know. So, in other words, they're just completely yeah, they, wasting they're, their time. they're just absolutely flat out fooling themselves, you know. Plain, plain um, uh, Peter Rabbit when they're four. Yeah. That's about the same difference, you know. Right. So. Okay. So... Should we look at more of the pictures? Well, all right. Let's do a couple. And, cause uh, there's, uh, yeah. How, how's our time running? Well, we've we we got another quick. 10, 15 minutes. Well, yeah, we'll scoot through these now, right? And there. I want to ask you, too, about maybe we can look at them and you can comment on them. But I want to ask you about the, uh, like the relationship between like the chemtrails, say. And chemtrails these. have zero to do with it. But Okay. But... We've seen the pictures of the chemtrails. What are the chemtrails then? And, and uh, well, the like, shouldn't these, uh, if these, uh, uh, whatever ships are here to help us, like, how come we got chemtrails going on? Well, it's, it's, man is doing the chemtrails, and man has to clean up their mess. I mean, the intergalactic mess and so on. That's that's what the radionic ships are doing. So, on. but man's own little shit, they got to do it themselves. That's why, you know, praying to God to come and solve your problems isn't going to do anything at all because you got to solve your problems. You created your problems. You got to solve your problems. It's the way it works, you know. Now, now chemtrails are are the Illuminati and these other guys. While well, there's two controversies, one is weather modification. I mean, that's a fairly obvious one. I've seen that myself I, in Ottawa. The forecast for the for the next three weeks in June of can't remember 2011. I think was going to be like 32, 33 degrees for two weeks in the whole north northeast of the United States and Canada. Yeah. And I saw, I went over to Hull and I came back over the Island Parkway Bridge and I saw in the far distance two or three ships coming, two or three, not ships, <laughs> two or three planes coming, two or three planes overhead and two or three planes in the distance. Mm -hmm. And so one's already done, one's overhead spraying, the next one's coming. By the time that was finished, I counted 36, and I don't know how many there were before I noticed it, because that could have been going on for hours. Right. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I counted 36 chemtrail lines by the time, planes with chemtrail lines. This was about 2.33 when they finished. By 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, it had spread out to gray overcast sort of thing, and by about 6 that evening, it was heavily overcast from horizon to horizon in all directions, and the temperature for that two-week period never went above about 28 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, that's weather modification. Mm -hmm. Now, you can argue whether that's good or bad, but that's clearly what some of these chemtrails are doing. Okay. Now, the other argument is that they're poisonous by putting crap in there to try and depopulate. I mean, that's a possibility. But you that know? doesn't sound like the kind of thing that should happen with the second coming. No, no, no. None of this. Don't, don't, forget, don't forget. Don't forget. Right? Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. We're talking about... We're talking about... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a really good example. I, I, I got a good example. It's a bad one, but it's a good one. There was a movie, the second Hulk movie, when they had the real green guy from the comic strips. Yeah. And Loki was the bad guy. Right. And right at the, near the very end, uh, he's standing on the pavement, and this 50-foot, and he said, I'm Loki, I'm a god, and grabs him, and he goes, wham, 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 wham. Now he's pounded in the basement just with his arm coming up. Yeah, puny god. But I thought... That's about the same example of what's going on with the heavenly host stuff versus the little crap that man's doing. Okay. It's basically it. It's very, very small potatoes. Uh, it's big potatoes because we're right in the middle of it, but it's really small potatoes on the whole scale. Okay. So we've got about 10 minutes left. Let's yeah, look at some right. more of these pictures. But also, so what else do we need to know about this stuff? Right? Well, um, mainly that, what I was hoping from you, see, 
uh, some of these pictures I'm going to show you have come in from, like, in Ottawa. Somebody now knows about them, sends, sent a couple of pictures. My friend in Kampala, um, you know, Uganda is saying and we're going to be seeing some more. Let's okay, let's so. let's t- keep talking while we look at some right, of these so, photos. So so now you start looking. They're, your telltale is that they're feathery. They're not like you know like plain trails. They're feathery. Um, they meet about ten fifteen degrees off the horizon. And sometimes, if you're lucky, when you look hundred and eighty degrees in the opposite, you'll see the inside out version. One right. will be full of the ionization in the middle, the other will be empty. Yeah, middle. and we've seen some That's of those. It. And, and if you can do a photograph of them, send it to me. <laughs> so this one's from Kampala, Uganda. This one, this one is right from downtown Kampala, again, from my friend in Uganda. All right, so now the next one, which is figure 16, uh, that was, again, from Lake Victoria, about 40 miles south of Uganda, and oh, that's uh, yeah. that's a negative pole. The other one was a positive because you saw the lines up the middle, and right. these are empty in the middle. Okay. Now the next now sometimes these things will um, uh, they'll I don't know even why to a certain extent, but they'll reflect in the lower cloud atmosphere, just the normal ordinary overhead cloud. Yeah. So the next one up is uh, Figure 17. There. No, this came off Google. Google. Have no idea when or where. But it, it just said it like it was. I mean, there's that's in the lower. It's reflected now in the lower. So it could be because it's been there for a long time. The ionization is just connected with the lower clouds. I don't know. All I'm saying every now and because I've seen them like that. I, ne- I never photographed them when I was in Ottawa, but I have seen them. So that's so the next one is now one that happened in Brantford uh, just last uh, spring, looking uh, due north. Sorry, due west. Um, and again, it's the it's it's the positive side because it's filled in the middle. But that's that's again in the lower. That was just at sunset. You okay. can see the sun setting over in the left hand side. Yeah. But again, it's it's reflecting in, yeah, with positive lines because they're they're all filled in. The next one after that is, uh, and this is a shame. I saw sometimes in Ottawa, uh, the sky was just like broken glass, absolutely. <laughs> If you smashed your windshield on your car, that's what it would look like. Right. When I was talking about the the day we spent on the beach in Vancouver in 71, that's what it was like all the way up 80 miles of Georgia Strait. It was just overhead like broken glass. Well, here's two poles that are sitting side by side, and they interact, and you get this broken glass effect. This is just sort of the a hint of the broken glass effect. This, again, came from Kampala. Wow. All right? Yeah. Now, uh, the next one is interesting. This came off Google. Uh, I've been explaining all along. Can you get me? I, I need to uh, on this one. Um, zoom in. Yeah, you zoom in on on me. No, no, oh, on you. Uh, uh, me. Yeah, I need to. Now I've been showing how you have a positive pole on this side, a negative pole on that side, and they're, you're inside overhead underneath yeah. the canopy. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you turn that whole thing around, so now you're looking down the pipe. Okay. Yeah. Then that picture you were just looking at is looking at the tail end, because you can see the lines don't go. All right. the way across, they don't go overhead. Mm-hmm. See, so what you're looking at there is the butt end of, of one of those pair. The one we saw earlier, where they big swoop, yeah. you know, that was looking at it from the side. This one is looking at it from one or another of the ends. So now that came off Google. See, Google. The, 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 the point of that is that these things are all over the place all of the time. Uh, people photograph these because they think, holy mackerel, they don't know what they are. Yeah. But, I, you know, you go to Google, you look under uh, Google Sky or, you know, Sky Photos and Bing, same thing. Uh, this is another uh, negative pole. Um, I just put it up there. If you can see the little sort of tulip thing at the top there, yeah. the negative pole uh, ionizations will often have, um, if you go on the website, you'll see a couple more. They have that tulip, characteristic tulip thing in the middle. Uh, the next one after that is a, is a fun one. This again came off Google. Oh, sorry, we're looking at 22. We uh, might be having some kind of technical issues. We're working on <laughs> Delanova. So let's talk about, listen, not a lot of time left. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, there we are. Yeah. So now you see that uh, somebody looked at that earlier and said, oh, that's a chemtrail. No. When these things first teleport in, now I've seen them quite often uh, in Ottawa. I never photographed them. But when they teleport in, they'll sort of sear an ionized streak. Mm-hmm. And and they'll expand from where they first come in, to, and it'll look like an exclamation mark. And then when it stops and it sits there for a couple hours, then a, a magnetic, a, you know, radionic magnetic field will start coming out from that point. So that 
just to me is about as good as it gets. There's a, there's your negative, uh, you know, ionization pull over to the right, but there's one of those exclamation marks that ship has just come in. Okay. Now, a couple hours from now, wherever that was, there would be two of these things doing a crisscross. So, and this is, uh, when did they start doing this, these uh, radionic well, ships? Well, in the early 50s, the radionic ships, uh, I think the fleet, now, there's always been ships here. There's yeah. always been ships here all the way through. Christ, there were ships here with Christ. There's been ships all through the Old Testament and so on. Yeah. But the radionic fleet itself has been, I think, since the early 50s. And that's when all of this started. Okay. Uh, the next picture after that, figure 20, so when the eyes glaze over, the interview's over. <laughs> Believe me, my eyes aren't glazing over. <laughs> over. Okay. Uh, that was, now see, again, um, people filming a movie or a TV and so on, it can be in the background. They don't see it because they're, they're focused on the actor. But this was taken right out of Desperation by Stephen King in 2006. It was, over, it was just like one flash, but there it was. Uh, now, it's, it's only ionized on one half because, uh, you know, the water vapors have been, not water vapors, but the clear air has been moving through and, and cleared off. Or the other side of the coin is that it may have been moving th- from, from right to left. I don't know. But anyway, there you can see the clear. Okay. All right, so the next one after that, uh, this is where it gets to be fun. Local motherships will also sometimes be present without the, without the anchor ships. Okay. Yeah. And their radionic field is different because they're almost like an eyelash because they're uniformly around the cigar shape rather than coming from a focal point because the, the scout ships are just a little dot. Okay. Okay. So that's These are long shape. cigar shaped things, so you see the lines coming up along the length. This was done in uh, Ottawa in 95. The next one is uh, done in Brantford in... Um, the summer of 2014. Now, the ionizations are starting to melt away from the bottom because by the time I spotted it, um, it had already started moving in. Um, half an hour later, that would be completely gone. But that was another mothership. That was another mothership because it's the eyelash effect. So right. You know, the difference between the feathery ionizations and the eyelash effect. Right. All right. So uh, we're almost to the end. Now, this next one was done in Paris, uh, not this summer, but the summer before sitting outside a backyard having a hot dog barbecue and um, the sun was just in the last stages of setting and there it was in the clouds as clear as a bell. See, again, it's the eyelash effect. And then this final one, uh, now as I say, there's quite a few more of this stuff on the website, but this came off Google and again, it's the eyelash effect. This is pretty dramatic. I don't know where, I have no idea where and where, but anyway, there it is. And then the final one, which is the fun one, Whoa, that looks like a flying saucer. Now take a look at the eyelash ionizations all the way around. You can see where they're already going off around the edge, and they'll be on the other side, too. Now, scientists call that a uh, fall a fall hole effect or something. They claim that uh, ice crystals up above the clouds have fallen down through, um, creating that effect while <laughs> the ionizations... The, eye, the eyelash all the way around, 360 degrees. Wow. Okay. So yeah. there is some great photographic yeah. evidence. Now, the one final thing to say. Yes. When I talked earlier about the ionized cloud sitting overhead in Denver, up about 1,000 feet, it was exactly like that, except it was all white instead of oh. clear with the ionizations in the middle. It was the op- that was a negative one. I see. The one we had overhead was a positive one. So. Okay. So what are we to do with this information, Delanova? Christ well, has returned two um, years ago. We've got the uh, love in your heart. Ships. If you see one, you know, send a, a love blast upstairs. I mean, golly, you know, let them know you know, you know. And that's it. And then we don't have to worry. Well, right? no, no. Uh, the chips will fall how they may. Who knows? You might suddenly start. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not the one to predict what's going to happen because the, the expression is to what you can bear. Everybody will have some different experience. The fact is that you know they're there now. You don't have to wonder now when's the second coming. You don't have to get on your knees and writhe your hands in misery and so on. Um, all right. This is all done by love. The, don't forget the the number the 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 single most powerful force in all of creation because it was set up in the original unification between the mother and father it was a love field. 
-hmm. And believe it or not, uh, this whole radionic stuff I'm talking about, love is a radionic effect because, uh, you know, people pull together at the breastplate through love. You know, uh, I hate to say it, but through hate, which is the negative, but it's still radionic, ionic, you'll pull together the breastplate when you're having a fist, but, you know. But it's it, it, the most powerful, single most powerful force in the whole universe is love. The whole of creation is built, built, built on a love vibration. Okay. So sitting back here, <clears throat> cooling your heels, yeah, I get into it, you know. All right. Okay. Delanova, always great to have these conversations <laughs> and learn all this stuff. And if uh, people want to learn more about this and get details that we've only scratched the surface of here today, you can get the book, The Revelatorium. Yeah, and and chapter 39, well, the book itself doesn't have that chapter 39. Because it's an evolving work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. So now, on the Internet, radionic.com, R-A-D-I-O-N-N-I-C. That's two N's. Two N's, that's the secret. Radionic.com. Yep. Is, and, is uh, it, the stuff that I talked about today has come from that, and chapter thirty nine of the Revelatorium on the website is yeah, you the can, same chapter exactly. So, so yeah. you can get get more pictures and read chapter thirty nine on the website revelatorium dot com. Thanks, yeah. Delanova. And right. I know you got some other stuff. Well, you one final do today. comment. One final comment. Sure. This whole stuff about the radiotic ships is the tip of the iceberg. The Revelatorium is the real story. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Hugh. Look forward to having you back. And All right. Thank you. Continue Look forward to being back. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's it yeah. for Liquid Lunch today. See you next time right here at thatchannel.com. <laughs>